I brought my agent to my show at the main room. Oh yeah, how'd it go? I bought my dick off. Farting in regular yoga class, fine. Farting in hot yoga is... First of all, just want to touch on that. Not fine to fart in regular yoga class. Do you know how many shows I've done with people I didn't want to fucking see? I don't. A million? All of my bridesmaids are wearing potato sacks. I don't give a fuck. I wish I was worse when I drank so I'd stop. Boy, the dicks I've sucked for literally nothing. Ah, oh, here we go again. Welcome to Slug! Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, it is Monday morning and it's another episode of Slobs. And guess what? Only me and Laura are here today. We've never done a duo pod. It's just us. And here's what people don't even really realize. We tried to start a podcast before Slobs. We actually did. We did. We we recorded one episode. One episode. The guy whose idea it was, the guy who pushed us to do it, mm-hmm. said, come in, I'm yep. going to do everything, I'm going to produce... We did one episode. By the way, it was awesome. It was a good episode. We did a photo shoot. Yep. And then he was like, yeah, I just really don't have the time for this. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the equivalent of like when a guy asks you out and then cancels on you. It's yes. like, I didn't even ask for this. How dare you? How dare you? Make me How? carve out the space in my life for this. <laughs> and then out. leave me high and dry. After we killed it, by the way. We, it was. A, I think we did. What was it about? We, talk, I think we it was talked called, a lot about some really intense Stuff. It was very intense. And we talk, I think we're going to call it bangs or something because we both had just gotten Yeah, bang. I'm glad it didn't work out. No, no, no. Because it just paved the way for slobs. Yeah, and now we're here for slobs. Jess is sick. We're not cutting her out. She's uh, She sounds worse than me. Her little horse voice. I know. It's a little horsey horse. Hi, guys. I don't think I can record today. Yeah, I don't either. Is that- <laughs> get get some like, rest. Yeah, you she must She apologized leave. so profusely, and it's like, I think she's the only one who's been on every episode we've done. Every single episode. I've missed <laughs> 300 now. Um, yeah, I've missed... I've missed a couple. So now we can talk about the writer's room we were in because it's out now, right? Yes. It, people post about it. So we all were writing for the Whitney Cummings roast. It's going to be on OnlyFans TV. Mm-hmm. And uh, I missed the thing. How was the actual... It, it recorded on Sunday. It was really fun. It went really well. Good. Then yeah. that's the end of that. <laughs> that's that. It's over now. Um, did you get any jokes in? I don't think I got any in. I think I got one in. Oh, that's good. But also I'm like, how many people pitched the same joke? Like it wasn't like, I don't know. It's like by the, by the end of it, like we wrote 225 jokes the first day of the writer's room. Crazy. So by the end of it, you've heard so many jokes that even like newer jokes I submitted, I'm like, did I think of this or did I hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Because you're hearing, it's that's too many jokes here one day. Yeah. Because I was like struggling, I felt like, and I, me and Jess didn't come in, because you, you brought us in a couple of days after, and I was like, I don't know what I'm fucking saying right now. Turns out I'm not good in a writer's room, and I need to be on stage performing, doing my act out. Huh? I, you know, I'll be honest, right now, I've never enjoyed working with others. This podcast <laughs> is the exception, because it's just us talking to each other. Yeah. But, like, improv, no thanks. Everyone's fucking my shit up. I can't ever picture you being in an improv troupe. Doing the jog across. (laughs) You coming out with a fucking funny... (laughs) Yeah, you wiping down the window going, Hey, can I get some help over here? Like, I really can't picture you doing that. I tried it one day, and it was 99.9% me standing on the side. Yeah. Trying to think of an idea, mm-hmm. and then the moment has passed, and I'm watching other people, and I'm like, "This is embarrassing." <laughs> I'm embarrassed <laughs> by what you're doing. Oh yeah, no, improv I'm not is proud hell. of what I'm doing because it's nothing. But yeah, improv might be the. I, I always say this, and people are like, "Oh, how bad is it when you see like bad stand up show like an open mic?" I swear to God, I'd rather go to an open mic than go to a bad improv show. It is torturous because they think they're doing well too, and the worst thing is with these improvisers good good on you for being this fucking positive but when they get off stage they're all like oh great set great set i'm like you just ate shit you nothing ate shit. was funny there was no jokes there it was like so hacking over the top and guess what i started an improv and i was exactly one of those people i don't think people should get extra points for not having put time into something mm-hmm. like the bar just naturally is so much lower for improv because it's like they thought of it on the spot yeah i can fucking tell it isn't funny <laughs> and every <laughs> time i say that people are like you just have to like watch the right improv i've gone to the best improv theaters in chicago and la tell me where it's good 
I'll tell you I'll right now. I'll go check it out, except I won't because I made a no, promise to myself. <laughs> Around the same time, I was like, I'm never going dancing again. I was like, I'm never going to another improv show. I tried it. I hated it. Mm-hmm. How many fucking times do I have to do and hate something before I'm just like, it's just not for me. No, if it, I'm yes. sure it's for someone. I yeah. know it takes a special talent because I tried it. And I think that that's a good idea is if you think that something unbelievable two weeks in a row. I feel, Can you hear that? It sounds like God farting. It does. It does. It's a very loud. Oh, he can't, if he can't hear it. He can't hear it. Okay. He, then we're he good. can't hear it. It's not happening. No. I think that if you think something sucks, you should try it. Like people who think stand up yes. is dumb. Yes. Go, go try ahead. it. And more than once. And don't do one. Don't do one fucking open mic where you bring 38 people. No. Go do it in a town where you've never fucking been. At the back of a bar. Go up last. And then fucking tell me how easy it is. Right. 100%. I will say, I do want to give a one shout out to an improv troupe. They're called the Sunday Service. They're in Vancouver, Canada. The funniest improv I've ever seen in my entire life. They have a really great show on Sunday nights, Fox Eater. A huge push right now. They have stand-ups go up there and I always go up whenever I'm in town I do the show and I bomb my dick off for seven minutes because they're like this is written and then they go up and do the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life and I'm like fair no I should be funnier but I'm just saying like they are like they in my opinion are the one exception that I've seen consecutively and every single time everyone's like crying in the audience so if, if it's done that well then but seeing bad improv is I used to teach an improv class to uh 70 year old women at a community center in Toronto oh my god that sounds amazing it was they were they were the dirtiest they'd come in and be like my saggy titties I'm like I'm like Marjorie you can't do that at the beginning of every scene and they kept like <laughs> making me do go in every scene I'm like I'm teaching you guys like, no no come in hey look who's here and I'm like ha like, every scene oh it was a nightmare God, no, it was very cute so cute it I love cute. it they loved it and they were dirty as fuck here's the thing I always whenever I do like stand up and I see older people in the crowd I get like really in my head I'm like oh they're not gonna like it they're gonna think it's too much I've had women come to me and go hey sweetheart you think we weren't eating dicks and sucking pussies before you were born I'm like that's fair yeah you were dude you absolutely I don't even get nervous when old people are in there. I'm like, they're the dirtiest motherfuckers on yeah. the planet. They've seen the nastiest shit. Mm-hmm. And now One time I was working at a corner store. I had a button down shirt. My titty fell out. And this old guy, I was ringing up this really old guy. And he was like, it's nothing I haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walked out. I doubled over laughing. I think he died. It doesn't he, matter. He died on the way out. He's like, that's the last titty I'm ever going to see. <laughs> see you later. The other thing is that improv audiences are... So overly supportive in my personal experience. Too much, yes. And I feel like it's a bunch of theater kids. And I and it is, I think it's people bringing their friends out. And so their friends mm-hmm. are like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. nothing annoys me more than someone in an audience who's trying to make the performance their show. Yeah. Don't laugh mm-hmm. over the top so big, so overly support. I, I'm thinking of this one chick from Chicago who used to do it at every show. <laughs> I, I hate in the back. Yeah, it's no, like no, shut no. the fuck up. No, laugh like, like a that. normal person. Your body will take care of it. If it's yeah. funny, you'll laugh. Yeah, it happens naturally. Don't laugh to show people that you have such a good sense no. of humor. No, no, no. It's I. Uh, you you are very right though with the audiences being like I don't know what it is. If those audiences were at every stand up show. We'd be on top of the fucking world. We'd you know. never think we were bombed ever because it's like over the top. But we wouldn't be funny. No, that's probably... There's a club in Madison, Comedy Club on State. It's such a great club. I used to do their open mic. I would drive from Milwaukee to Madison on Wednesday nights and sign up and do their open mic sometimes. It is. It was impossible not to murder. The audience is dying laughing at setups. Oh, like, fuck. it's too good of a room. And so mm. the comics, and this is at least at that time, which was fucking like 12 years ago, so I'm not insulting anybody now, but like... The comics weren't no. funny. They didn't get funny. They couldn't get funny. Because if you if everything you say crushes, yeah. then go to the bar across the street and like, sorry, dude, you suck. Yeah. I thought I was good at improv for a long time because we would also do these bringer shows. And then I we'd like go home and we'd rewatch our stuff to like learn. I'm like, I'd come out and just be like in the back with no lines <laughs> I'm and I, I'm like there's nothing and I'm like that's not funny I, I would never bring anything it to the scene it is funny though that's a walrus <laughs> impression that's hilarious I that's all I did it was a group there's four of us we were called the dumb cunts with a K we thought we thought it was cute and then no one booked us because uh, of the name like we can't put you on the flyer but I yeah, would there's three of us they would, three that would do actual scenes and I, I every scene I'd enter and just be like 
and I would just do like something. Steph, like you do that funny. now in yes. stand up. Why are you saying that? Like that's not your act. That is exactly on friends who kill with that's, Bill Burr. How we? <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Like wow, you. let's see, let's hear it. That is exactly me. Look, I can't stop myself. Um, I want to say we went. I tried inviting you. So last week Zach was in town. Also, I've gotten some very nice. I thought you were kidding when you said you. I mean, may I say it? Yeah. You pissed your pants in the mosh pit. Oh, I peed. Oh, yeah. So we'll get into the piss. So I, <laughs> so first of all, Zach was here for a week. Also, people are saying very nice things. They've been listening to the podcast. Also, uh, shout out. There's a girl. I can't remember her name. I feel bad. She was at the show in DC. Big fan of Slob. Awesome. She just came out watching on Sunday. She was like, I'd love to see that you're in love now. People have been saying that we've, they've been falling because it started off with me being like, I'm sitting alone on the podcast. Now I'm like, I'm in love. Did I say I loved him? Did he not say it back the first day? Yeah. Yeah, we had a bit of a situation there. There's three days of me wanting to kill myself. But now he's... That made me really mad because all of his actions screamed love. And yeah. I thought that you were well within reason mm-hmm. to tell him that you loved him. Yeah. Because yes, you've been in love yeah. for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then yeah, when yeah. he had the audacity not to say it back, I didn't really appreciate that. But we're back in the game. No, we're back in the game. Back, he no. did say uh, thank you. And that made me feel good when I said it. And I was like, this is me at the improv at midnight waiting to go on on a Tuesday night. And I'm like, you don't love me? And then I was at a manic well, in set. in fairness, why did you choose that moment to tell him you loved him? It was a problem. We were eating he nachos liked, at the I bar. I can't believe he didn't say it back to me right before I went on stage. Well, that's when you yeah. said it. That's the time you chose. It was a bad to time. To put yourself in an incredibly vulnerable position. It was a bad time. He was being very nice. And he was like, I heard him like bring to another comic about me, how funny I was. And he just yeah, like turned over and I just like said it. And was a dumbass to not say it back. But that's fine. He said it in front of my taco stand and it was very cute. And now the guy who my, I, I, I didn't talk too much about my ex love at the taco stand, but Juan Montano. Now you don't been, get a good deal on tacos I'm anymore. I'm screwed. Yeah, I he I would do shots of tequila out of the back of his trunk sometimes. Uh, anytime I got stood up, well, he'd give me free tacos. Maybe putting herself in well, a dangerous yeah, no, situation. No, I sent him my tits a couple but... times. I don't want to get into that, yeah, but right. well, well. you know, I I may have done some things. I, I mean, whatever. <laughs> Poor Juan. Um, <laughs> Juan, I think thought we we're gonna get married. Juan was five two. Is five two? He nice man. Juan, if you're listening, you're not. But um, so we go. I try to invite you and Dave because Jess and I. And her boyfriend, Nate, we did double date to my favorite band, Death from Above, 1979, which I keep shouting out. Did I meet them? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I got backstage. I oh got my backstage. God, okay, okay. going to die. He, lo- he loves them, it turns out. I didn't know this. What the heck? I was really depressed. Fuck. I was really depressed. And do you want to know something so funny? And then we'll, we'll totally go back to the show. I thought it was going to last for like three months. I was like, I'm in a deep depression. I was like telling everyone who cares about me, like I'm safe, but like, please stop talking to me for like three months. Like I didn't want to talk to anybody. And now it's done. And then my period started. And I was like, wow, could this really have all been that? I thought I was going to die. Like I was like, I expect to survive this, but like barely, you know? Uh Uh-huh. And now? And now my period started and I'm... Completely fine. <laughs> there you go. Because you were sending some cryptic texts. And by cryptic, you're like, I can't talk to anybody. I'm depressed. And we're, we I really just were wanted like, everyone uh, to stop speaking to me. I really like, did. I don't know what to do. You were like, nothing. Hey, Leave me alone. Don't, <laughs> do any, don't do anything. We left the group chat. Yeah, we got I the did. Hell out I was there. like, please just keep it to mandatory, mm-hmm. like to shit that's like basically life and death. Like if you have to, if I have to respond to something. I will. But you're like, I can't but right now. But I don't want to. Yeah. Well, that sucks because I, I had two extra tickets. I was going to get you and Dave to come. Yeah, I couldn't walk. Oh, fuck. I couldn't do it. Well, here's the thing. I Meeting Sebastian, so I realized I went back and looked at my old concert tickets because I saved them all like a crazy person. The first time I saw that was 2003. It's 20 years. I've, I've been obsessed with band for 20 years. So I've been DMing them since the Bill Burr thing and they replied to me on Instagram. So I got... He offered me backstage passes. So I got two for me and Zach. And I was like, trying to tell Zach, I'm like, I don't want to tell you. I, I, I'm going to try to act normal. But I'm, you know, it's meeting a, hu- a huge crush. B, like, I'm obsessed with this fucking band. Yeah. So I like, the concert starts and I'm like, I'm not, I don't really want to go in the pit. And then immediately, I, like one of Nate's favorite songs, he's like, let's go in the pit. I run in. I immediately fall. I, I'm talking. I slip on a water bottle. I go, I, I'm immediately on my elbows in this wet pit. And I'm like, for fuck's sakes, Nate has to pick me up. Two more guys pick me up. Very embarrassing. First of all, to being the only woman in the pit. And now I'm fucking on, uh, on the ground. And it wasn't a, a graceful fall. Like, I slipped pretty fast and pretty hard. Nate so it, told me this story. It was really embarrassing. 
And also, Zach's watching from the side, make sure I'm okay. And all of a sudden, there's me, ah, picture my mullet immediately slipping on a water bottle. Like, I'm like, if I tore my ACL, I'm gonna fucking snap. So they put, they b- lift me up. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm kind of moshing around. I, like, I kind of like, I do like one bounce. I'm like, oh, I think I, I, I peed a little bit. I'm like, I've sometimes pee pee comes out, not a lot, but like a little drip. And I like did it sure. again. I'm like, sure, oh, if I'm you're like, jumping around, yeah, I'm we're jumping around. And then like, another piss came out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, whatever. So. It was that was the first time in the pit. It wasn't that bad. So I come out, we're hanging out again. Then my favorite song, "Little Girl," comes in. I go crazy. So I run in the pit on my own this time, and now it just it comes out, and I'm I'm at this point fully urinating. I have peed in the bathroom five times. I don't have to pee. It's coming out. I come out. Jess and Nate and Zach are standing there, and I'm like, I piss, and they're like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see Jess give me the steps, exaggerating a bit again, and I take my cell phone light and I flash it to my fucking like uh, green jumper, full pile of piss i'm talking like an absolute kid peeing their pants in a fucking school play urine and they nate and jess i i don't think i've ever seen them laugh that hard they both like started almost crying because they're like she pissed herself and then like zach was like oh my god and then zach said he smelled it i'm like you didn't smell it, it wasn't that fucking strong i bet he did he did he did, he did. It's I urine everywhere. No, I you were soaked in it i was soaked in my own piss and then i was so embarrassed that i had to meet them I afterwards i love that you just accused him of lying about smelling <laughs> the pee that you just <laughs> described yourself as being so Soaked in. Oh yeah, I was literally a bucket of piss. I was our a full... producer, by the way, is trying so hard not to vomit. <laughs> Look, I didn't know I had a u- loose urethra like this. I, I made fun of having a loose one. Turns out I peed everywhere. It's the jostling stuff loosen, around. Stuff loosens up after a certain age. And, and you try moshing, and I was like, a I trampoline have to, like, push is a great pelvic floor exercise that'll okay. keep you from. I I when I started jumping on the trampoline, I would I would pee a little bit, you know. And now you're not. And now I don't. Okay, and you, you just got to strengthen then. your pelvic floor. Yeah, I got to strengthen it because something's up. We're, we women, can't, we can't we're be women of a certain age. Oh, we so can't just be moshing. I should be moshing. Slipping on water bottles. Yeah, I mean, are oh, let's you start with that. trying to break your back? Yeah, like, I, I, the, fu- the only thing we're I was not laughing 25 about, anymore. but this is what's funny because the band has been around for so long and there are older fans. It was a very like chill mosh pit. It's really like funny. we all were kind of like, oh, you know, and like nobody was like, <laughs> like raging. We we're like, excuse me. Sorry. Like it was like a light push because we're all like our organs shouldn't be jostling around like that at this age. So Dude, people slipping on stuff as if it's a banana peel is so funny to me too. Also, the con- I walk in in this one piece green romper thinking I'm hot as hell. I'm like, uh, uh, oh, like it was an immediate slip. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so then I was like scared that the piss was going to be too much for after the meeting the band. Because I'm like, now I have pee pee pants. Steph, it was. No, it dried up. It dried. I was like airing you it out. It dried smelled up. like pee. Yeah, it smelled like pee. So I guess I didn't need to tell you that. I well, mean, I was. Pissed. What are you supposed to do about I, it now? I, 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 what am I supposed to do? You're not, not going to not meet him. Yeah, I'm going to meet him. Meet him in your pissy pants. So immediately. By the way, no one has ever looked more like a baby than an adult in a pissy romper. Look, it was a piss-soaked romper, and I smelt like shit. It's fine. I immediately, I'm backstage, so I'm like trying to be cool, and he comes right backstage. He's like, "Hey, wait to me." I'm like, "Hi," and I'm like, "Stop." I'm like, my, my, my good friend Allison told me before. She's like, "Don't grab them. Don't touch them. You you've done weird things before to them. I grabbed them years ago." She like, don't grab them. He comes up, immediately hugs me. I, you're not reacting, but I was very excited. He I'm smiling. Me. I'm I waiting for, was that at the end of the story? No, we hugged and then we talked for a bit. And then Zach's so cute. He's like, because I wasn't going to ask for a photo because I'm embarrassed. He goes, can I get a, can Steph get a photo of you too? Get a, really, a photo. I look like an actual piss soaked ham. Oh I look God, so ugly. No, I look so ugly. I'm so pissed off. I couldn't even do like a full post because I was so mad at how fucking. Does it show the pee in the picture? No, I think it dried by that point. Do you have a no, picture I have no of piss the pee pants? That's too bad. But look I mean, at me. I wouldn't take my picture. You know, I wouldn't be like, yeah, let's get a full body. My Have you ever seen anybody more happy? Like, look see. at me. I was so fucking thrilled. I was literally. Aww, I know. You're so cute. I look horrible, but he's, he's cute too. He's hot as hell. Yeah. But then the Zoom bassist, who look I didn't at even. That face. No, I, he's, he's hot. Look at that I know. face. I know he's hot. He's Sebastian Granger. If you're listening right now, you know you're attractive and I'm stopping. But the um, the bassist uh, came up to me after and I uh, talking to him for a second. He's like, hey, thanks so much for always like, he's like, well, we see clips of you wearing my shirt. And I'm like, on slobs. I wore the Death and Buff shirt on slobs. I guess they saw the clip. Oh, that's very awesome. Nice. I know. It's very nice. Now I'm sweating. Um, but yeah, I, it, it felt really incredible to meet a band that you've been obsessed with for 20 years and like and they like said that they were so funny on netflix and they watched me and stuff so it made me feel that's awesome and then on the way out the opening band uh the obgms they recognized me and they got a photo with me i'm like this is hilarious that the opening band's like holy shit and then they got a photo with me i'm like oh i'm cool that's so cool i'm cool is it we get into the old i think it's time for a break it's time for a break let's throw to a break right now i thought he was grabbing the thing oh my god what an advertisement that was by that if we 
think it's good. <laughs> if we think it's good, get it. If we don't think it's good, don't get it. Get it. Um, this would be a great time for the bladder control. We, oh, we had, we had yeah. like some sort of a support group for people who piss themselves or something. Do we? We should have an adult diaper ad right there. It was something like that. It was it was a bladder control issue thing. Oh. Uh, that, you know, our viewers sent to us that one time where oh. they were like, just since you were wondering about who your advertisements are in Ireland. Oh, it's Guinness, okay. non-alcoholic beer, something for people who piss themselves, oh. and something else that I forgot. Well, look at this. Speaking of our listeners, I want to read this. Yes. And it's okay. It's okay. We'll read it. Okay. I'm not going to say it's from. Hey, ladies. Again, we love getting messages. I'm not, I'm not reading this to deter anybody from doing it. Is it, it from we a love, man or a woman? From a man. Okay. Hey, ladies. Love the pod. Some hopefully constructive criticism. Suck my fucking dick already. This is, well, this, okay. I would love to hear you focus less on the negative comments on the pod. They may even dissipate with the less time you talk, the less time talk you give them. I love the comedic spins you put on them, but just feel like it's a big chunk of a lot of episodes. Hope this comes across in a positive way and keep up the great work. Slobmeister. Shut up. Here's the thing. This is... We would not find the nice comments or the nice messages if we don't. So we have to sift through and read all of this fucking shit. This is the problem. Yeah. This is the issue with here, too. I, I don't want negative comments. Yeah. We get so fucking many. It is hard to not read them. Right. Let me read this comment I got the other day before walking on stage at the comedy store. I literally. May I just speak to this message real quick? Please, because I'm not. We're not done speaking about it. Yes. The thing about the way that our brains work is that I don't even notice the positive comments. I know that there are more of them and I really appreciate them, mm -hmm. but they don't affect me. You know, the negative comments, I remember each and every one. Yeah. Yeah. The negative comment, the problem is, and, and the problem is like, it's just, <laughs> there's, there's, it's a bag conference in town. Um, the problem is, as a female comedian, this is what we get. We get fucking hounded with negative comments, with weird comments, with strange jams. I'm not saying men don't. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying I know for fucking certain we get a, they don't a thousand like times do. more than yeah. like we do. So it's like, I don't want negative comments. I would not find the nice ones. So this is what I get the other day, walking on stage. This is a night I was following Harlan Williams in the main room and Judd Apatow at the improv. Just to give a, an outline of what my night was, okay? Yeah. yeah. I get this. From a guy named, I'm going to say his full fucking thing, kill.your.local pedophile with a zero. That's his, that's his, that's put it up on the fucking screen there because I don't give a fuck about this guy. You're, you're going to slide in my DMs, be a piece of shit. I'm outing your full fucking handle. The fact that you have a career proves gender inequality. You're disgustingly unfunny. A man would be booed off stage if they were even of half as untalented as you. I didn't want to read that. You think I wanted to fucking read that? I wa was like, oh, somebody DM me. And it didn't go to my request. It went to my general. So I thought I fucking knew them. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm dog shit. We're focusing on the negative because I'll tell you what, it makes me feel better to talk about it. Because when we talk about it out loud, a lot of our nice fans, especially a lot of people that follow me on Instagram, they go out of their way and they, they hound this guy back and they send negative things. I'm not saying do that. I'm not trying to get people to fucking turn into trolls here, but it's like, it's fucking frustrating that we have to get this and I'm going to out them and I'm going to make it makes me feel better to talk about it. And it makes people realize how shitty it is to fucking send these fucking comments. I also want to be clear that like I'm not like when I say we notice the negative ones more than we notice the positive ones. I'm not I never remember the person's name. I couldn't tell you the handle. So it's like it's not like you get attention. I mean, I don't give any attention to the individuals. I just block them. No, that guy was blocked and poured immediately. Um, but yeah, I mean, the com so I, I just say that because sometimes I think people just want our attention. And so I don't want people to start giving us negative comments so that we give them attention. Yes, 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 that's true. But I'm like, I, I, I do, I see that you don't like, you know, hearing the negative comments. We don't like getting them is the problem. But right. we get so fucking many that it's hard to not react to them. It's hard for me not to every single day, every single fucking day. I get a DM like that in my in my inbox. We every do fucking appreciate day. I get it when emails. people say nice stuff to us. Though. Yes. Thank so I, I want to read this. So we have another one. I have a little counterpoint here from uh, a girl named Emily. She goes, your podcast is the best. And please come do a show in Portland, Oregon. On a more serious note, I'm a big fan of the show. And your podcast helps me with my confidence. Do you have any? Aww. 
It's a nice message. We love to hear it. Do you have any public speaking tips and tricks? You made it seem so easy. Um, so I figured we could help with this. Yeah. Mine is just like, keep doing it. Just keep practicing. And if you're afraid, do it afraid. If you're nervous, do it nervous. Eventually, you get less nervous. But also, like, I had huge panic attacks, the worst stage fright for the first 11 years of doing stand up. Mm -hmm. And I just fucking did it anyway because they kept bringing me on stage. So yeah. I got to walk out there, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that, like, if you only do stuff that's not scary, you're not going to do. You're not going to have a very exciting life. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. My tip is um, who gives a shit about these people? What do you what? That's something that's been helpful. Yeah. Because I, I literally I did a show in, in uh, Chicago. I did a fundraiser. Yeah. And the first two comics were squeaky clean. They're doing really well. And I'm like, oh, they made a huge mistake. They brought me in. They didn't they didn't fly anybody else in. And I'm like, I'm about to bomb in front of this like you know, wealthy audience of all white people. And I'm like, and I'm about to go up there and tell my pussy. And I, I, before I went on in my head, I was like, well, the guy who organized this wanted me here. He likes me. Mm -hmm. So as long as he likes me, that's all I'm leaving here with. And I, I had the mentality of like, well, this is who I am. This is what they're going to get. And I ended up thankfully doing very well. And they were super fun and super cool. And like, it was weird, actually. More men liked me than the women, which mm -hmm. that never happens with me. My little thing, and I feel like I've said this on here before, but that I say before I go on stage, I'm just like, please allow me to be of service. I just ask whatever higher force yes, rules yes. the universe, please allow me to be of service. And it helps me to focus on like, I'm giving something to these people yeah. rather than like, I want them to like me. Something else though that has helped, um, there was a comic in Milwaukee when I started, uh, her name was Liza. And she, one day I was like flipping out about to do an open mic. I was so nervous. And she was like, Lara, look around the room. And I look around and it's just like our same friends that are always there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not nervous to impress any of these individual people. And that was what I did when I was doing arenas with Rogan is like I would go out and just look at people's individual faces. Yeah. And I'm like, no person is scary. So no. why is a crowd mm -hmm. scary? And also picture like the people, some people are so scared about you know, you the thought of even going up there, the fact that you're even taking the chance to go up there is already, you're already bypassing anything these people would ever do in their lives. Yeah. So you're already putting that forward. And it's like, I mean, I have a different way of thinking this. I never really got nervous because I used to Highland dance. <laughs> people forget. And I used to, as a kid, I was, when I was three years old, I was That's dancing in front of like 800 people. So I'm, I don't have, I never had that stage fright thing. But I just, whenever I do like, again, when I open for Bill, it's almost like if there's a way you can get almost out of body in it like if you can just tell yourself you're just up there to do do you it's it's you're doing your thing if they don't like it like get also too that's the thing where i'm always like well if they don't like it then that's their problem right you're, not everyone is ever going to like you and we all know this so that's yeah. it now i mean the thing is like your body the the amount of like stress that you feel when you have stage fright your body doesn't know if it's a tiger chasing you or if it's you about to tell jokes to people yeah. so it's also helpful to me to sometimes be like the worst thing that could possibly happen is this goes bad i'll live through that yeah. i'm not going to die i'm nope. safe mm -hmm. and then you leave and then you leave that's it that's what it's like it's like what's what's the worst that happens for 10 minutes you're up there feeling like a piece of shit like slurring your words also right. okay you Whether do it goes time. good or bad, when it's over, yeah. it's over. Exactly. And then you've moved on. And most of those people will forget that it happened. You'll yeah. forget. Eventually, you'll forget. Yeah, you'll dwell on it for a bit and be like, well, that was a nightmare. Right. Look, I pissed my pants. It doesn't publicly. really matter. Unless do I it's care? one no. of those like really important sets. And then, yeah, it kind of matters. But also, I just feel like. But she's just doing general public speaking. Like, I don't think. She's yeah. What are you comedy. even doing? It just, there's, there's I mean, I guess we don't know, but I mean, yeah. write us again and let us know what you're doing. Yeah, Because if you're given like yeah. a presentation at work, I mean, you're going to, uh, like, who cares? I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. feel like nothing <laughs> is scarier than telling jokes. Like, I used to be in bands and I've given presentations for like school or whatever. Yeah. Telling jokes is the most vulnerable thing that you can do mm -hmm. as far as public speaking. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most fun, but also like... If you're giving a presentation, no one's going to laugh. No, so you can't laugh. even yeah. bomb. Yeah. What are you even fucking afraid of? Yeah, yeah. If you're playing a song, no one 
all laughs at the same part. Like nothing else requires a collective immediate response where Mm -hmm. you can so obviously tell if it's going well or badly. Because you have to be engaging and funny. Yeah. Stand up is very like binary. The switch is either flipped Mm -hmm. or it's not. They either laugh at the joke or they don't. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess there is, you know, a spectrum of like how hard they laugh. But if you tell a joke and nobody laughs at it and you've told a room full of people it guts you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. I mean, I guess it does. Because now if I tell a joke and it eats shit, I'll be like, wow, that was like weird. You guys all really uh, left me on that yeah. one. And then they laugh at that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah, just yeah. move on. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I also think, and this is a sick thing, but even if you do bomb, anytime my parents would come to see a comedy show, that's all they would talk about. They'd never talk about who had the best set. Like, that one guy, what the heck was that? And then the whole ride home, they're like going on about Joe Schmo, who right. ain't shit. That's so And funny. then they're like re- repeating his jokes. And I'm like, it's almost as if you liked hating somebody more than you liked watching somebody who killed. It is really fun to watch someone bomb. It is. And then, of course, I, I, any show I've ever done in the last month, I can tell you who bombed. Yeah. I can't tell you who killed. I have no idea. I, I remember who bombed. I remember the exact joke. I remember being like, <laughs> Like, it's like a sick feeling. I went back to Milwaukee and um, went to an open mic for fun, you know, because a lot of my old friends were there. Um, and and I was watching this comic set and he told a joke and it it did so bad. And it was also just so offensive. I don't remember what he said, but I remember it was one of those where it was like, it was edgy and he took a risk and no one was having it. And I involuntarily made the sound of, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and then my friends around me laughed at that. And so then the guy thought that he had gotten a laugh. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, man, no, I just no, bought no. this guy another day of telling this joke. What a disservice to him and the world. And, and the world. And the world. Um. Oh, God. I have not been to a mic in a it, was while. it was like a racial pun or just something where it's like, oh, like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> no I can't one even... needs that. No, no, no. Nobody needs that. I do sat through a whole mic. I actually, I went to I one didn't in sit Arizona. Through a whole was... mic. I'm not out of my fucking mind. Yeah, I yeah, stopped yeah. I like, by. Good God. I stopped by, but they did the thing where they didn't throw me up forever. Oh, And yeah, I was yeah, like, I, I was no. headlining the improv there for a weekend you like, i gotta go and i'm just like i don't think you know how this works no, I put me be. up now um i just did the dc comedy loft though have you done that very fun you haven't got the it. dc improv that was really fun oh was it mm-hmm. huh <laughs> where are you next i don't know um bloomington minnesota december 1st through 5th so i guess i okay. do know december that's, that's soon yeah at the um house of comedy in the mall of america i fucking Ooh. love that gig dude I can see you like in a mall gig. Have you ever done the West End? Of course I love a mall gig. I walk to the mall every day for steps and fun. You bet your ass I've done the West What's... Edmonton mall gig. I oh, got yeah, that okay. coming up in May. <laughs> there you go. I was yeah. going to say, okay. Yeah. Um, I love the way you're getting booked in Canada. Here's the thing. I'm still not. So I'm going to put on my own cross Canada tour next year if you're listening. Uh, and I'm not going to go to the clubs because the clubs... Canada hate me still. What the fuck are you serious? I, I'm dead serious. I cannot get booked in Canada. I don't That's know. I don't know wild. what's going on. It's very bizarre. Actually, I have one gig coming up for, uh, for JFL 42 in, in Vancouver, February 25th. But bef- other than that, I don't have a single Canadian date on the books. So I'm going to do my own cross Canada tour, and I'm very excited about it. I don't How know long have we been time. recording? Okay. What do you say we do seven more minutes? Yeah, well, I want to drop my shows quickly in here. Well, we, we drop them in the middle. I feel like people are listening to this. Yeah. Um, what am I? Where am I? Oh, next weekend I'm in um, the 18th to the 20th. I'm at the MGM Springfield, Missouri. Is that correct? Why are you asking me? I don't know because I almost bought tickets to the wrong You're Springfield. You're holding the information. I'm just holding a calendar, actually. I've almost anything. done that. Do you want to know what my agent did? He sent me a thing that said I had a gig in Colorado Springs, Missouri. So I looked up Colorado Springs, Missouri. But, of course, the M was supposed to be a C. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah, I was like, that's cr- crazy. I, I am flying into Hartford, Connecticut. So whatever is close to that. The Springfield closest to that. Turns out there's no airport there. Dude, I, you know, ah, oh shit. I'm going to open this door real quick. Give me one second. Yeah, MGM, the casino there, which casino gigs are always. I love casino gigs. Do you? Yeah, they pay really well and there's lots of lights. 
I always just feel like I bomb at casino gigs because they're like angry and then I'm angry and I go up and it's like a whole thing. I don't do my bet. I mean, I I don't like crush harder than I crush anywhere else because a lot of times people are watching casino shows because they lost all of their money. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, um, yep, yep, yep. But I don't know. I like walking around. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm back on stage at Patwell's fucking program. So I'm going to be sober at a casino, which is worrying me. We don't love that. Um, I'm off snacks. I'm off fun. Look, I love yeah. Stasia. I love the program. Turns out I'm a drunk and I like being drunk. And that's it's that. And there it is. It's pretty fucking crazy to me how much work it takes me to achieve a very average body type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of daily work. It's I literally worked out already this morning. And I don't think it was enough. So I now had to take the dog for a very long walk later on tonight because mm-hmm. I feel like a big slob. Um, the podcast. Stacia's crazy, by the way. Stacia's crazy. And, um, uh, and I also, also, my boyfriend, Zach, <laughs> uh, he's on this crazy diet and he's getting ripped and he did lose 150 pounds like four years ago. So he can get ripped. He knows. So wow. I can't have a hot, ripped boyfriend while I have a full gut sitting in my lap on airplanes because I can't have that right now. I feel it. I don't like it. Um, I was talking to Stacia about not eating snacks and she was just like, just take five, five, 5,000 more steps a day. Just walk 15,000 steps a day. And I was like, yeah, I understand that mathematically. Practically, I don't want to have to walk seven miles a no. goddamn day. No. To be at maintenance. No, no, that's not. That's a lot. That's I don't know whose knees you're walking around with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine are but mine buckling right now. don't care for that idea. No. And also time-wise. I'm like, I don't want to walk for two hours a day. No, who's time for this? We have to show. I fuck it. I mean, I, do, I guess I do most days, but I don't want it to be mandatory. No. What are you already at for steps today? I'm at three. No, I'm going to guess 2,000. Because I walk the damn dog. Oh, wait, I'm also... 1549. Oh, you got a lot of work. You got a lot of work. Suck my dick. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be in Philly. Thanksgiving oh, weekend. I already had my Thanksgiving. Sorry, America. So if you want to get away from your family, punchline in Philly, 25th, 26th, 27th. Then I'm going to be in Escondido, San Diego. That Is that San Diego? Fun. December 3rd, 4th. And then this weekend I'm going to be... Um, Riding my boyfriend's face while his Gross, kids are in the other room. Dude, what? what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, well, you sitting your boyfriend's face? Yuck. I don't say that in public. Well, I mean, you should. Gross. I feel like you don't ride his face. Gross. <laughs> your reaction to this oh, is making me so feel like you don't. Gross. Is it gross? John, is it gross? I don't want to hear about it. It's gross. How is it gross? It's a it's a regular, natural thing that people do. Okay, I took a fat shit today. That's natural. Do you want to hear I about it? I actually would love to hear about well, it. Well, you're a sick fuck, and that's I my am. point. <laughs> oh. I also took a fat shit today. Look at us. Fat shit All face right, writing. thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go do a self-tape <laughs> and eat a nutritious lunch and pray for Steph. I'm going to ride my boyfriend's face all weekend. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Follow the podcast at Slob's Pod. Follow me at Lara Bites. Follow me at Steph Tolev. Follow me everywhere on the internet at JMS Comedy.